Good morning, I'm Morgan of MorganDonner.com and today I want to show you how to make one of these really pretty egg ornaments for your tree this year. Before I get on to the tutorial, I want to indulge in a quick little bit of show and tell. This year we got the chance to go to Florida, my husband and I, and we got to see all the different parks in the area. We rode tons and tons of rides. We got to check out some of the really cool areas that these parks have built up. The Harry Potter world stuff was particularly awesome. We really, really enjoyed those sections. And then on the last day, because we were feeling a little bit homesick and missing our puppies, we decided to go ahead and check out a Greyhound race. All right, time to actually get started. Now, I am going to start making out my egg ornament by emptying out a bunch of eggs. Uh, I start by poking a hole using this little tool that I have. It has a shape on the end that looks kind of like a pyramid. Make sure that whenever you're drilling out the eggshell, you don't do it over the bowl that you're going to be putting the egg contents into because you don't want to end up with little bits of eggshell in the food that you're eventually hoping to eat. Might as well not let it go to waste, right? Now, I've got this tool called an egg blower. I'll link to it below. And I've got it attached to an aquarium pump, which is blowing air up into the egg right now. The air is going to displace the egg contents, and so those are going to fall down into the bowl. I make sure to clean all of my tools well beforehand, so I have no problem with eating these eggs, which are quite cold and fresh out of the fridge. Eventually, you will almost certainly have an egg break on you. Don't worry, it happens all the time. They're fragile. That's why we do a whole dozen eggs at once. That way, we've got plenty of backups. So I've gotten all, or really most, of the egg yolk type stuff out. I want to go ahead and try and get the rest of it out with this little water spigot thing. You want to try and blow out as much of the water as possible. You don't want to just leave all that moisture inside the egg. It'll eventually dry out, but it's a lot faster if you remove as much of it as possible now rather than later, right? My eggs are now prepped and ready for some lines. I want to use these as guides to make my spiral design. So first, I'm going to do some longitudinal lines to divide my egg up into quarters, then halfway in between each of those to divide it up into eighths. Once my eighths are completed, I need to go ahead and do a mark around the halfway, the equator if you will, if this were a globe. With that middle line in place, I can use it to make a 45 degree angle through the eight middle intersections. To finish out that spiral, we're going to continue extending the diagonal lines up until they reach the top and bottom of the egg. It's going to create actually kind of a pretty little flower shape. This part's a little bit tricky, so don't worry if you end up having to erase some and redraw it. It's all part of the process. Next, I'm picking up my Kiska. This is an electric model, so I don't have to heat it up using a candle flame. Instead, it just keeps on keeping on without me having to take a break every moment or two to reheat it. I'm going to use this to cover up the pencil lines that I made already, and anything that I cover now will be white at the end of my process. So I need to keep that in mind. The reason that the wax I'm using is black is because it's been mixed with soot. This is a really handy feature since it makes it a lot easier for me to see the lines as I'm drawing them on the egg. I didn't start this egg out with any particular theme in mind beyond vaguely Christmassy. I figure peppermint sticks are delicious and for some reason associated with Christmas, so that's going to be my little line pattern here. In between each line of peppermint goodness, I'm going to go ahead and put a bunch of little snowflake slash, I guess crosses? I meant for them to be snowflakes, but I'm realizing now that looks an awful lot lower like, uh, like crosses. Oh, there we go. There's the six parts of a snowflake. Much better. All right. So we'll go ahead and decorate that out real quick here. And now we get to do one of the really fun parts, dyeing. The first color is going to be pink, so I'm just going to let it get a little quick bit of color before taking the egg back out and dabbing it dry. Right here, you can see that I've already made a mistake. See the uneven coverage here? It's been a little while since I've made one of these ornaments and I forgot that you're supposed to give them a quick 
vinegar bath to remove some of that factory residue. It's a little bit too late to do anything about this particular egg, but I definitely need to clean up the others from this batch before starting on any of them. Now that I've got my pink color on there, I want to go ahead and protect or keep what I've got so far by covering it with some more wax. This time I'm using my little handheld uh, candle heated kiska instead of the electric one and I'm going to use it to cover up this candy cane zone. And now I've gone to color number two which is a darker red and again dab it off once you've got the color saturation that you wanted. Once you've reached your final layer of dye, you want to go ahead and remove the wax that was protecting all the other layers that we started with. Secure the egg so it doesn't go flying as you apply the heat gun. And whenever you start removing the wax, you want to start first with the end that you plugged up. That's because you don't want the air to heat up in the egg and find a way out of the egg other than that opening, which I have had happen. An egg just kind of bursts right in the middle somewhere because for some reason that was a weaker point for the air to escape from than the little end point at the top. Once that air has a place to go, you can go ahead and heat up the egg anywhere you like until eventually all of the wax is removed and onto your paper towel instead of the egg. And now we are on to the very last step of the process, time to varnish the egg. I don't have footage of the one that we've been working on so far, but luckily I've got a bunch here that are ready for some varnish sweaters. The dye is water soluble, so the varnish helps protect the egg from potential water damage and also makes it slightly stronger. I really don't recommend smashing it against a wall, but if it happens to drop just a couple feet from like your Christmas tree, a few layers of varnish here are going to help improve its chances of survival. You could just stop right here for a pretty shelf knickknack, or you can glue a finding on top of it to hang it from a tree. I'll include a link for those below. I hope you had fun joining me on my yearly egg decorating season. It's heaps of fun, I really hope you try it out.